I'm here at International Armoured Vehicles 2020 and I'm joined by Corey Warris who's the head of the Robotic Combat Vehicles programme. So Corey, please could you tell me a little bit about um, the programme, the Next Generation Combat Vehicle programme, just to give us a high sort of level overview. Absolutely, Melanie. Uh, so the uh, Next Generation Combat Vehicles really it's four different vehicles. It includes the optionally manned fighting vehicle, the robotic combat vehicle, the armored multi-purpose vehicle, and the mobile protective firepower. So just that's a, that's a lot of uh, a lot a lot of adjectives kind of combined in there. So very simply stated, uh, the optionally manned fighting vehicle is the Bradley re replacement. The robotic combat vehicle is an unmanned ground combat vehicle, exactly like it sounds. The uh, AMP-V is what we call the armored multi-purpose vehicle. That is going to be a replacement for the 113. It's, um, it's actually f four different variants. You have a command and control variant, a mortar carrying variant, um, a medevac variant, and then you're also looking at a potential engineer variant. And in the mobile protective firepower, that is very simply stated a mini tank that's designed to be integrated within the infantry brigade combat team. This technology is the very precipice of a revolutionary change to how we fight future wars. What the NGCV means to the future of war fighting is it's not, it is not an evolutionary change, where it's not an increment. We're not just going to be able to shoot further and see the enemy quicker. It's going to revolutionize the way we fight. And all of these systems are going to be unmanned or perhaps um, optionally manned? So um, the MPF and the AMP-V are going to be 100% manned. Um, there is some efforts to look at drive-by wire in the future, but right now there's not decision one way or the other on how to proceed. However, the optionally manned, vehicle, the optionally manned fighting vehicle and the RCV, um, the optionally manned vehicle is just like it sounds. Um, the intent for that is for soldiers to be able to dismount the vehicle during brief periods that are very risky, such as like urban operations or conducting a, conducting a breach. Um, con control that vehicle via remote and then mount back up in it and continue their mission. And then the robotic combat vehicle will have no people in it whatsoever. And um, very recently, the OMFV program, I believe it's going to be restarted. Could you explain a little bit about that for me? So. What we did with the OMFV is we are 100% committed to replacing the Bradley, but uh, we realized that perhaps the schedule and the requirements were a bit too aggressive, and we took a pause, and rather than duplicate the mistakes of the past where we went forward with unrealistic expectations of industry, um, we decided to hit the brakes, and we're going to uh, take a pause, go back, continue to work with industry, and figure out the requirements in which makes sense on the timeline. So rather than rush blindly into failure, we decided to take a break real quick, reset, and move forward together as a team with uh, expectations we both can realistically can achieve. And can you tell me what's coming up this next year with regards to the program? Oh, absolutely. So this next year is going to be uh, it's going to be busy. So. Um, specifically with the robotic combat vehicle, we're doing our first live experiment at Fort Carson, Colorado in March and April. Um, we're going to be using uh, four uh, RCV surrogates. We're using uh, 113s with drive-by wire kits, so there's no intention to move these forward into production. But really what we're trying to do is validate the man-on-man -man teaming concept with them. Um, they're controlled by two mission-enabling tech demonstrators, which are Bradleys that have been uh, upgraded and with a bunch of enabling technology that could spiral into future programs or also into uh, legacy programs as well. Um, simultaneous to that, we're doing something called Project Origin. Um, Defender 2020, which is a big uh, demonstration in UCOM, uh, we are fielding four RCB light surrogates um, that will take part with an exercise in Latvia with the uh, 173rd Airborne. They're going to be integrated into a reconnaissance uh, squadron, and we're going to look at trying to see how do, with some of the payloads we're looking at, um, how do they play a part in the reconnaissance mission, and what payloads are value added, and maybe we can look at different programs as well to spiral those in. We also have two virtual experiments, um, the first of those being in February, and what we do for virtual experiments is we bring about 100 soldiers in from the, the force, we put them in a big video game, we model the video game after RCV requirements, OMFV requirements, and we let the soldiers fight it out with an opposing force. 
Uh, we get their feedback, and then we take that feedback and then look at up updating our requirements documents. It's a very cheap, very easy way to learn a lot. We're doing two of those. Uh, as I said, the OMFV is going to be, uh, we're going to get really hot into uh, looking at revamping the requirements, so the timeline's kind of unknown at that point, but uh, we're going to try to get something turned as quickly as possible. Uh, the AMP V is well under production right now, moving to, full, um, moving to uh, begin fielding very shortly here. And the MPF is going to be uh, beginning its um, soldier, soldier use evaluation. They've down-selected down two different variants of the MPF. They're going to field both of those variants to two different divisions. And we're going to let the soldiers try them out and get their feedback and figure out which of the two variants is the best one. So then the Army can make, make another down-select and go forward into full rate production. So I understand two of the unmanned ground vehicles um, were recently displayed at AUSA in 2019. Could you tell me a little bit more about those and how they kind of integrate into the robotic combat vehicles program? Absolutely, Melanie. So what you, what, to what you're referring to was our, what we're calling our phase two experiment. Um, so as I talked about, we're using some very rudimentary platforms for phase one. For phase two, we asked industry to provide us a more robust platform. Um, so specifically, we're looking at the RCV light and the RCV medium variant. So therefore, uh, we, we began a solicitation for white papers uh, earlier in the spring of 2019. Uh, we had everyone come in, do a pitch. We down-selected to uh, the vendors with the best proposals for the light and the medium. And then from their proposals, we asked them to submit a full prototype proposal on white paper um, based on what they submitted we then identified the two best winners, and the winners were Connect North America. They are providing their EMAV uh, for the RCV light platform. The EMAV has been used heavily by uh, the Marine Corps at the Marine Corps Warfighting Lab at McWill. Um, they, we've received really good feedback from what the Marines have had to say, so we look forward to seeing that performing as the RCV light. For the RCV medium, we selected Textron's M5. Um, it's based upon the Ripsaw platform that was demoed at uh, Texas A&M. And uh, what we're really impressed with um, is that Textron is, is about two years ahead of schedule. Um, we asked for a surrogate platform, something off the shelf, but they were able to turn and give us something that was really purpose-built. Um, not just Textron, but industry in general is about two years ahead of schedule, uh, which is a testament to our communication with industry and talking about how we try to communicate our requirements that are informed by all the experiments as early and frequently as, po as possible in a very candid fashion with industry. And they're listening and we're very excited because we're very early in this process and industry is moving just as fast as not faster as we are. So we're very excited to see where this program goes. Corey, thank you very much for your time. Oh, pleasure, thank you. Pleasure to be here, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.